It all happened a long time ago, in the summer of 1966. I was 17 and fascinated by the way films were made. I'd heard that scenes for a big budget Hollywood musical were being shot right here in Castle Coombe. I couldn't drive then so I persuaded my dad to bring me out here to see what was going on. Well, almost in the words of one of the songs from the film, I'd never seen anything like it in my life. I've never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it in all my life. Castle Coombe, with a population of around 350, has been called the prettiest village in England. And every year thousands of tourists from all over the world come here to soak up the atmosphere of this very special place. Its narrow main street, called The Street, leads down to a bridge crossing by Brook, with a row of former weaver's cottages standing on the bank. To many people, this is what a typical English village should look like. 20th Century Fox wanted to repeat the huge success of The Sound of Music by making three big budget musical films over a three year period. The first of these would be Dr. Doolittle. Set in the year 1848, it would star Rex Harrison in the title role in 1964, he won an Oscar as Best Actor in the Warner Brothers film, My Fair Lady. Alongside Harrison, the role of Matthew Mugg was to be played by Anthony Newley, and the love interest of the film was provided by English actress Samantha Egger, playing Emma Fairfax. By the magic of film, Castle Coombe, which is miles inland, would become the fishing village of Puddleby in the Marsh, complete with a quayside, fishing nets, small boats and dozens of fishermen. And it all happened right here, on the side of Bybrook. Before Dr. Doolittle, the banks of the brook were gently sloping muddy grass, but when 20th century fox arrived, they built solid stone walls to channel the water and set about constructing a dam to raise its level and create a harbour. All this activity and disruption was seen as the last straw by, of all people, a group of members of the SAS. Bizarrely, they wanted to make a protest on behalf of the villagers of Castle Coombe at the way they thought the film company was mucking it up. And what better way for them to do this than use explosives to blow the dam which was just down there, up. Fortunately their plan was foiled when the police were informed and they were all caught. The huge 70mm film camera finally started to turn over in mid-June and the one month location shoot of Dr. Doolittle had begun. Or so they thought. It's hard to believe, seeing it as it is today, that this was a hive of activity. A piece of Hollywood transported to rural Wiltshire. You never told me you were secretary Making Castle Coombe look good on the screen was entrusted to director of photography Robert Surtees. A man with great experience, he had previously photographed, amongst other things, Oklahoma, Ben-Hur, the original Mutiny on the Bounty, and The Graduate. The film's director was Hollywood veteran Richard Fleischer. In his career, he made over 50 films, including 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, The Vikings, 
and the story of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Tora, Tora, Tora. But with Dr. Doolittle, he was to have a real challenge. The production of the film took place in one of the most cloudy and wet summers for many years, and on the rare occasions the sun shone, the army of technicians behind the camera would emerge to try to complete another complex musical sequence. And not everything happened at ground level. Occasionally, the narrow streets of the village were blocked by a large camera crane needed to take the heavy camera, its operator and the director up above the rooftops. One of the shots from the crane shows how the production was slipping behind because, as we all know, in Hollywood musicals the sun always shines. But not in this scene. The prison faces the road here. So what we do is we tie the ropes from the bars of the cell to the elephant and he pulls the whole wall up. It wasn't all doom and gloom though. Other parts of the village were dressed and stood by for action on sunny days. My friend the doctor says the world is full of fantasy and who are you and I to disagree? Let's hope and pray that is a way that life we love will always stay for my friend the doctor and me. The area at the side of the castle inn had its moment on screen when Rex Harrison was taken away from the local jail. <coughs> it was also the place where stunt riders and well-trained horses showed what they could do. That could have been the cry of the locals, as by this time, the shooting schedule and budget had both been torn up. Anthony Newley patiently waited to finish off his scenes, alternating with Rex Harrison, who was pressing on trying to film one of his big musical sequences in the countryside and hills around the village. Working with the animals was a logistical nightmare, and when he had to sing surrounded by a flock of sheep, the scene took days to complete, as he was frequently having to be sprayed down because of flies, and the sheep insisted on urinating on him at regular intervals. Storm clouds were gathering over the village and the production. Because of appalling weather and shooting scenes with large numbers of unpredictable birds and animals, they were falling weeks behind. But the unit carried gamely on. One shot from Dr. Doolittle sums up the obvious desperation and pressure to get things done. Gone is bothering to wait for the sun. Gone are the crowds of extras. All we are left with is Anthony Newley and his very strange Irish accent in a deserted, overcast street. Who blarney when he can? Let me explain the sort of thing I mean. My friend the doctor says the moon is made. And even when the weather was on their side, everything on a production of this size took an enormous amount of time. I was there when they did this shot. It took a whole day to rehearse and film, and they did it. Just once. Time and money finally ran out for Dr. Doolittle in its stay in Wiltshire. It was forced back to California to complete many of the scenes that were planned to shoot in and around Castle Coombe. Its original stay of four weeks was extended to three months and it went three times over its budget. Despite this, 
Hollywood has not been put off coming back to Castle Coombe, with scenes from several films being shot here over the years. Indeed, it was somewhat ironic that when I came back here to make this film in September 2010, I couldn't, because the whole village was a closed film set. It had been transformed into a Devon village in the year 1914 for a big budget film of the Michael Morpurgo book War Horse, directed by a certain Steven Spielberg. And, by all accounts, their stay of a mere two weeks in the village caused as much inconvenience and disruption to the residents as Dr. Doolittle did back in 1966. The story of the troubled production of Dr. Doolittle happened a long time ago. But every time I come to this pretty little village, the memories of that rather unusual summer of 1966 come flooding back. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. Never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it in all.